Ready to be a leader in real estate? Please welcome Katie Clancy with William & Ravis to tell you how. So before I came out here, I was sitting in the audience and I just plopped down on a seat in the back just to sort of check out what was going on. I looked next to me and it's Sherry Chris. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, it's Sherry Chris. Okay, be cool, be cool, be cool. Hey, I'm Katie. <laughs> and I told her I was speaking. She's like, oh, that's so cool. What are you speaking about? I'm like, um, um, stop being a douchebag and you'll make more money. I was like, ah, oh, that's not really what I'm saying. That's, but uh, you know what? It's kind of the subtext of my message today. So listen up. My degree is in zoology. And I know zoology, real estate, it's like a no-brainer. <laughs> Not really. Um, but this is why I chose the metaphor of lemmings. There they are. Lemmings, it's kind of funny. Lemmings actually do not commit mass suicide and run over cliffs. They don't. But they are, they are an odd number. They, they, they are evolutionarily mandated to consume. That is what they do. And they will expose themselves to peril in that singular focus. So they don't go over cliffs. That actually came from a Disney movie, believe it or not. They bought a bunch of lemmings, chased them off a cliff, like actually chased them off a real cliff, and they died. Thank you, Walt Disney, for that visual. Blech. But because of that mandate, that imperative to consume, they regularly expose themselves to competition for resources, predation, and disease. And it, it's not good for them in the short term. It's not unlike our industry. From day one, we are taught that we're here to make money. So when I first started in real estate, I took one of those seven-week, super intense, like, boot camp courses, very expensive courses. Anybody else here take that one? You know what I'm talking about? In the first day, so I'm all green and I'm all excited, and the guy goes, so how many people are here in real estate because they love people? And I'm like, me, baby, me. And he goes, wrong. I was like, oh, God, what have I done? He said, you're here to make money. He said that, and everybody in the crowd's like, yeah! I'm thinking, oh boy, I have made a very big mistake. I, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it here. But that is the kind of training that we are indoctrinated with time and time again, over and over. So like the lemmings, we are programmed to go after the dollar. We're programmed to consume, and we do it with singular focus. And by doing so, we also expose ourselves to great vulnerability, okay? So I talked about competition for resources. Every time we have a boom in this industry, we have a huge surge in new licensees. And we end up with a lot of chaff among the wheat. Am I right? A lot of people out there kind of getting in the way of the quality people. Predation, we're so busy with our heads down, we don't notice that piles of money are being invested into entities that are designed to minimize our role. We don't even notice. And finally, disease. You might know this because you might experience this, and I'm not being funny. We have elevated levels of divorce, suicide, and substance abuse. We're sick. It's not a good thing. So this is what happens. We are money-driven, so we don't share. How many people here should have hired an assistant or another assistant probably three years ago? Right? Yeah. Yeah, but you don't, know, I don't know if I can afford it. I don't know if I've got enough money. You, well, I won't even go there right now. Um, so, and we're Lone Rangers, so we try to wear all the hats, when in fact we're not actually good at everything, so we mess some of the things up. We're not, we're not coming through, we're 12 minutes late to everything. Actually, on average, real estate agents are 12 minutes late to everything. Yeah, chuckle, chuckle. Well, people, come on in, guys. Yep, you're, yep, yep, no, we're happy to have you. You're only five minutes late. Um, we don't have time to do everything that we need to do to do well in our business and still have a life. So then we get some pressure from home, and people are a little, is this ringing any bells? Yeah? Pressure from home, like, really? Really? You, you can't, you, you're going to miss the baseball game again? Or you're on the phone for the whole thing? 
And so we get a little, we get some problems there. Some of us have some ethical lapses. Okay, we tread real close to that line: is this right or is it wrong? In our gut, you know the answer. And shiny object syndrome. We're spending all our money on all these things that we think are going to help us make more money, when in fact all we're doing is spending more money. We feel this giant disconnect in ourselves, and we end up in burnout. How do we let this happen? We, I mean, 99% of the people that I know in this industry are smart, good, and I mean that really good people in their. Hearts, they are givers, but we ignore those feelings and even big signs that there might be a better way. So sometimes it's subtle. Sometimes it's just a feeling that you have, but sometimes it's a freaking two by four. And one of the best examples I can think of are Vayner bots. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. Now, don't get me wrong. I am a huge Gary Vaynerchuk fan. I think he is the sales and marketing messiah. All right, I'm gonna put that out there. However, let me have, ask you a question. What word, when you think of Gary V, what word do you think of? Hustle. What grind? Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Brad said I could do that. Okay, so hustle, grind, dominate, all these things. That's not it, you guys. Gary's success is based on words like empathy, humility, giving, caring, patience, and we don't see it. We miss his point, and he's constantly like, "Hello, hey, you guys, this is what you need to do," and we're like, "Crush it, crush it, run it, like." <laughs> I've been just as guilty, so there's nothing I'm saying up here that I haven't done. So I went. So in January, Agent 2021, Gary had this event, and Tom Ferry was there, and Tom interviewed him, and it was amazing. It was so great to have the two of them talking and really hearing that that banter back and forth. It was really civil, which was great. Um, and my favorite quote that came out of it was. Empathy, patience—these are the magic of the killers of the world, and people don't see it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sing it! And I was so excited that he finally said it on the, in this platform, and that people were hearing it. I'm like, oh yeah, Tom's got it now. So we are, we're rocking and rolling. And then Tom did a podcast about it afterwards, and it was great. And I'm listening to him. I'm like, this is great. And, and he gets to the end, missed the whole quote. Never even mentioned it. I was like, "Oh my God, this is a bigger problem than I thought." Like this icon in our industry didn't even see it. Blew my mind. Anyway, for most of history, there has been no reason to question this traditional transactional model until about ten years ago. So. Over the past decade or so, we haven't just had a change in our industry. This has been a fundamental change in Western culture. This is not something we have to get through. It's not something that's going to pass. This is it, my people. Everything is different. We went yesterday in one of Clelia's、uh, panels. I think it was she who said this. It's all true. We know we went from being gatekeepers. To being service providers, and some of us picked that up right away. A lot of us didn't. But you got to understand that people. When I talk about people, I'm talking about consumers, and I'm also talking about agents, because agents are people too. Can I get an amen? Yes.、Uh, but we have new expectations in terms of engagement, and information, and service. We have much higher standards and expectations. To respond to that, you have got to stop acting like a lemming and start being a leader. Now, some people have already picked this up. Like I said, when the shift happened, some people were already here. They were like, "Thank you. Let's do it this way now." 
I would say there are three places where I'm seeing this already and where there's more opportunity. One is anybody, whether you're an agent, a brokerage, whatever, even just, just corporations of any kind, if you are a local champion, the whole mayor campaign, if you are a local champion and you are known first as a giver and then as a real estate professional, if you show consistent investment in the people around you, you become, that's, there's success in that. There's gold in them hills. I also believe that we are in the age of the independent brokerage. I'm thinking Alante, Chris Lindahl, the Betts Realty Group, Leading Edge, these are strong teams and franchisees who have peeled off these large, hierarchical, pyramid model brokerages to do their own thing. And they're doing it great. You know why? Because they have their own tech ecosystems. They only have what they need and they use what they have. And they also have created a culture of complementary specialists. So they have picked their people really carefully. They don't have more than they need. They have exactly what they need and want. And they don't need expensive, one-size-fits-all back office tech. And they don't want to be under the thumb of detached, slow-to-change, large brokerages. And the third place I'm seeing it is in tech. So I'm starting to see tech companies who are offering um, like a, a la carte customized, tailored back office solutions on a smaller scale. And I think there's a lot, that might be a place where brokerages could find some opportunity. Okay, that's great. You're thinking to yourself, I'm not doing any of that. <laughs> I stink, this is awful, I, what am I gonna do? All right, so three very important things that you can do, but when I say do, I really mean be. Because the change you need to make is not tactical. It's a mindset change. And the first thing you need to do is start asking questions. The big one is why. Like, why am I in this business? I'm in this business because I like people. And it turns out you can make money for liking people. Those are not mutually exclusive things. Why are you in this business? What am I good at? Me? I am a rainmaker. That is what I do. What am I bad at? I cannot find my way out of a paper bag. Every day I walk out of my hotel room and I go right. The elevators are right there, They're right, but I go right every time. I hire to fill in my weaknesses. I spend money on the things I suck at because I can't be good at everything and neither can you. You have to also pick your head up every once in a while and notice what's going on around you. What is happening in my industry and where do I fit? Now this next slide I think is the most important thing that we can do to shift our heads into the right place. And that is, we need to spend our time with people. Spend our time with people. Now you'll see in this slide, these, some of these people are my family, and some of these people are organizations I volunteer with, some of these people are clients, some of these people are dogs. <laughs> you need to spend your time with people and spend your money on anything that gives you more time to spend with people. And you need to understand that success is a long play. You have to have patience. The success that you're enjoying today is from the investment you made yesterday. You cannot going around, be going around Closing everybody all the time, it's irritating, it's annoying. I will not answer your phone calls. I don't want to be closed, and neither do you. Nobody does. They want a relationship. So the old school, traditional, transactional real estate model is becoming about as relevant as a prehensile tail, okay? Or an appendix. We just don't, there's really not much room for it anymore. The wise will note that lemmings as a species are actually not extinct. They're not even actually legitimately threatened. They're doing fine. There will be casualties in our industry. It's just the way it is. But there will also be those who adapt and evolve. We will think independently. We will lead with people. We will have patience and we will thrive. 
Thank you.